Hi everybody, I'm Dr. John Hayes and welcome to this week's episode of Feeding Neuropathy TV. What we're going to do this week is to talk about a very common topic in neuropathy circles and that's the neuropathy called small fiber neuropathy. There are two different types of nerve fibers. There are small fibers and large fibers. And the term small and large simply refer to the diameter. Large nerve fibers are those nerve fibers that tend to carry messages rapidly because they are insulated with a protective coating called myelin. Well, that's a topic for another show. But today we're talking about small fibers and small fiber neuropathy. These small delicate nerve fibers are those that are most commonly affected in conditions like diabetes, metabolic syndrome, chemotherapy, and even some viruses. The term small fiber neuropathy is used frequently because it is one of the most common types of neuropathy that we see in clinical practice. For patients and clinicians alike, small fiber neuropathy can also be one of the most difficult to diagnose and to treat. And the reason this is so is that very often the neurologic examination is normal or nearly normal. It is not at all uncommon to have a patient with severe symptoms, pain, tingling, numbness, burning, sleeplessness, yet all their diagnostic tests are normal or nearly so. And even the bulk of the patient's neurologic examination can be completely normal. So what is one to do? Well, the most important thing is to work with a healthcare professional who has a high degree of awareness of what small fiber neuropathy actually is and what may be causing it. It's also very important that your healthcare professional look at the most common underlying causes. And this would be changes in blood lipids, meaning your blood fats, things like cholesterol and triglycerides, and also how your body handles insulin. Sometimes patients can have small fiber neuropathy yet have normal blood sugar levels and normal hemoglobin A1C, one of the most common tests for diabetes, prediabetes, or metabolic syndrome. So in cases such as this, it's important to dig even further with diagnostic testing. Things specifically that test glucose tolerance, specifically the glucose tolerance test done with insulin levels. The earlier you can make a diagnosis of small fiber neuropathy, the more effective your treatment can be. And the reality is, just like in so many forms of peripheral neuropathy, the key to successful treatment is lifestyle changes. If you look deeper into the causes of small fiber neuropathy, you'll note that we discussed diabetes, metabolic syndrome as two of the most common. The correction for small fiber neuropathy are the same things that allow you to correct underlying type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. The most important are change in lifestyle. Change in lifestyle in particular means moving towards a more plant-based diet as well as eliminating animal products and animal fats. In-clinic treatment of small fiber neuropathy revolves heavily around the Neuropathy DR protocol. And this consists of things such as manual therapy, massage therapy, with the addition of appropriate laser and neurostimulation wherever appropriate. The good news is, after making a diagnosis of small fiber neuropathy, being aggressive with your lifestyle changes and pursuing the correct in-clinic treatment could go a long way towards restoring your quality of life. Thanks for watching today's episode of Beating Neuropathy TV, and be sure to tune in again next week as we talk more about peripheral neuropathy.